yes, I hear the complaints. Yes, I hear the, the, the challenges. But it is not as simple as people make it out to be. Uh, this business of building infrastructure, repairing and maintaining the infrastructure is, is a very complex one. I announced in the budget presentation last year that we're going to launch a new program called the Spark program. That program will see the allocation for the first time, largest allocation in the government's budget for road repairs and rehabilitation. And that will be $20 billion. It may sound like a lot, but I will say to you that it is not enough relative to the demands that are need that exist in the country. We are going to ensure that those roads that are repaired out of that fund have the input of the people. Because the truth is that persons, the only way sometimes that people have any uh, impact on government policy is by protests and demonstrations. And I think that in 2024 Jamaica, there has to be a better way for the public to be able to exercise influence on government policy. So a part of this allocation will be community driven, meaning that all the members of parliament, the councillors, the elected representatives must conduct consultations, division by division, so that people can say, which infrastructure, which road, which drain, which gully, which breakaway. Now remember, this is a road program, so, it's, so the infrastructure must be related to roads. So, it, so you could conceivably address other infrastructure issues, providing that it is impacting the road. So you want to have the public to be able to discuss it, to share their views. Now, as I said, the 20 billion sounds like a lot. But if you put that against, you know, 60, 63 in. constituencies with in. some kind of, in my constituency, I have, you know, I, I have over 140 roadways. And, you know, a lot of them are in need of repairs and most of them are heavily used uh, in a constituency like this, you can imagine. So not every road is going to be repaired, but it is important that there is community participation in determining the priority of which roads are repaired. And so we intend to, to use that. I am hopeful that this will go some ways in changing people's perceptions about how infrastructure is maintained. This is really now the first step for the government to move from a kind of reactive maintenance program, which is mostly what we have damage take place and then we are running behind each time there is some damage or a significant weather event to correct to now move to a kind of preventative maintenance program where we through a deliberate program of planning seek to extend the life of the road we have already started that on our highway programs you will notice that the highways that we have built new roads that we have built we have had heavy rainfalls, heavy weather events, but thankfully, none of them have reported any major or significant damage. Why is that so? It is because the government has taken a deliberate decision that when we build these new roads, they are built with proper drainage, they are built with proper sewage, they are built with proper water lines for internet, they are built with the proper camber, they are built and designed to take 50 to 100 year weather events. It makes the cost of it a little bit more expensive. The planning time is a little bit longer. So from the time of my announcement to the time of it actually being built is a little longer. But that is because we are doing much more than just laying asphalt on the road. So already we have started this process of the, the preventative maintenance on the major roadways by how they are being built. We're going to now turn to dealing with the local community roads, roads like this one. So for example, this road is built perched quite precariously on a riverbank cut into a hillside, which is probably very um, 
loose soil, soil that could easily erode um, if there was a, a heavy shower of rain. This is a, a historical thing that my administration has you know, inherited. If we had to build this road new, we would never build this road here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a decision taken maybe 80 to 100 years ago. And we have to live with it. It's a consequence of those decisions. And I repeat that. If we had to build these roads now, we wouldn't build them here. All right? we, we would go further inland if we had to. We would find better pathways. We would do more soil tests uh, and build the roads where they could stand up. But the fact that the road is here already, people have lived around it. We are tied into this pathway. We are tied into this infrastructure. So it means that when we repair this roadway, bearing in mind the Rio Grande right there, the landslip that has occurred there, we may very well have to put up a wall to retain this road, which will be far more expensive than the roadway itself. Mm -hmm. And this is the discussion that needs to be had about infrastructure. Uh, yes, I hear the complaints. Yes, I hear the, the, the challenges. But it is not as simple as people make it out to be. Uh, this business of building infrastructure, repairing and maintaining the infrastructure is, is a very complex one. Uh, we have roads that are critical for, for example, agriculture and so forth, where there may be only, you know, 10 houses, 10 households that live on that roadway. But the situation is such that it's, you, you know, every Jamaican is entitled to access. And so we have to repair. The conversation, therefore, about roads is one that has to be uh, far more comprehensive than just saying, the, the, you know, the road condition is bad, government has to fix it. The conversation now needs to move. Where are we going to build our roads? How are we going to structure our communities? What's the, the general plan for the, the, the area? What's the budget that we're going to put in? Now remember, when we make the allocation for $20 billion on roads, that means that money isn't there for hospitals, for education, for everything else. So there is an opportunity cost involved in making the allocation. But because we understand the politics of it, the people who have said, we want our roads, government has to respond, right? And which is why I'm saying that if we're going to spend that money, then the people's voice must be heard in establishing the priority on what is going to be spent on. So I'm happy to be here with Anne-Marie and our team and representatives from the NWA and the, the people of the area who have, who have and the mayor, and the mayor of course, and the people of the area who have gathered to, to hear what we have to say and uh, uh, to be in this very beautiful parish. <laughs> of, of, of Portland. It is absolutely beautiful, serene and you know even though it's raining and people are worried about what the rain could do to the infrastructure I think most Portlanders like the weather like this. Yeah. Yeah. When it is cool um, and uh, even a little bit rainy and, and, and overcast. We're used to it. <laughs> this, is, this is a traditional Portland uh, and so I'm very happy to, to be here with the people and in the area and to explain what the government is doing in terms of ensuring that your road situation is addressed.